Talk of Giants YouTube, hello. At least for one more time, it is Saturday, and it is time for a Five Keys video. It is unfortunate that 50% of our playoff chances are basically, it's basically out of our control. It's unfortunate, but the Giants have a very important game. They have one more game against the Dallas Cowboys tomorrow, 1 p.m. at MetLife Stadium. Let's do it. Let's talk some Five Keys to victory. Key to victory number one, I actually want to show a video that I did in the beginning of the week, I put it on social media. I did not put it on YouTube. Figured this would be a good time to put it out. The Giants defense has been getting killed over the middle of the field. And this video is going to explain why. This video is going to explain why the Giants defense the last three weeks, basically since the Seattle Seahawks game, has been a little lackluster. Hope you enjoy. I'll see you back in two minutes. The Giants defense has not been good. I have a theory as to why they have not been been good recently and here is the theory since the seattle seahawks game week 14 15 and 16 the giants have given up explosive pass plays of 15 plus yards at the ninth highest rate in the national football league that is not good before the seattle seahawks game they were tied for first in the national football league and not allowing explosive pass plays of 15 plus yards what has changed i believe the Giants set a precedent during their very good, very triumphant game plan against the Seattle Seahawks that they are a team that is dedicated to not allowing the deep ball, the deep passing play. They are dedicated to not letting anybody get behind them. They are dedicated to keeping everything in front of them. And I think that has come back to bite them right in the ass the last three games. Does the data back that up? There is a way that we can check this. Sharp football stats by looking at completion percentage by depth and location and pass frequency by depth and location. My theory, I believe, is correct. Over the middle of the field, during the last three weeks, four, weeks 14, 15, and 16, teams have been completing passes at a much higher rate over the middle of the field, and they have been attempting passes over the middle of the field in weeks 14, 15, 16, compared to weeks 1 through 13. Teams were trying to throw down the field a little bit more. They were trying to target the sidelines. My theory of the Giants are playing a little bit more softer in coverage because they're trying to prevent the deep play, but smarter offense coordinators, they have, been, they have been picking up that you are able to throw the underneath ball, you're able to get some yards after the catch, and it's a combination of the Giants have not been tackling well. Joe Judge has been talking about the lack of tackling, and their dedication to not allowing the deep ball may be coming back to bite them. I don't know. That's a theory that I had, and I'm glad the data kind of backs it up. So that's basically key to victory number one. The Giants controlling the middle of the field. They've been doing a very good job of controlling deep center field and not allowing the big explosive play. But good offenses are seeing that they could take advantage of the middle of the field. That's leading to yards after catch. The Giants have also had some problems missing, ta missing tackles too. So that's basically key to number one. Control the middle of the field. Don't allow Yak. Execute on tackling. Key to, the, key to victory number two. Take advantage of an undisciplined defense. The Giants' offense before the Week 5 game against Dallas. The Giants' rushing offense, 30%, approximately, 30% of their rushing attempts ended at or behind the line of scrimmage. Those, those running backs were getting tackled at or behind the line of scrimmage. 30% before Week 5. But it was Week 5 where Caden Smith started being a lead blocker. They started doing this play that I'm showing on the screen right now, where Caden Smith and both a guard, they're pulling across the line of scrimmage, and Caden Smith is being a lead blocker. You're seeing on the screen how he's demolishing Jalen Smith right now. This was the first play of the Dallas Cowboy game week five, the first matchup that we had. I want to see more of that. The Giants, they've been running that play all year. They've been running that play all year long. This Dallas defense is an undisciplined defense, both as, the, as a rush defense and a pass defense. But I especially want to see... All of these talented guards, like Zeitler, Lemieux's probably going to play, Hernandez may get a series or two. All these guys that are very good run blockers, they're very good in space. They're good at taking guys down. I want to see them use Caden Smith. Obviously, that play has been happening all year. I want to see that being executed as well. And also, let's maybe bring back this uh, this outside zone play that we had against Seattle, the 60-yard Wayne Gallman run, where you had three offensive linemen, two guards, plus Andrew Thomas, pulling out in space. 
if this is an undisciplined defense, especially since Leighton Van Der Esch is going to be out for Dallas, if this is an undisciplined defense, those outside zone plays maybe should work. Let's run it. Let's see what we can do. Take advantage of that. Execute uh, execute on the rushing offense-wise. Uh, we know what the Giants have to do passing offense. I've been talking about it all year. You know, expanding the field, explosive plays, um, having deep concepts. That's what they have to do on the passing offense. I want to talk about the rushing offense, though. So key to victory number three. Seeing Andrew Thomas one more time is going to be fun. It's been a real joy to see how he's grown. Um, he has struggled this year. Um, ar arguably, if you look at all of the tackles that were taken in this year's draft and their season collectively, Thomas might have had the worst season. But Thomas has also arguably been the best one the past month or two. So he's he started. He has not gotten hurt. He's played all he's played all sixteen games. He started fifteen because of the disciplinary action that Joe Judge took upon him towards the middle of the season. But he's played in all sixteen games, and it has been a joy to see how he has grown over the course of the season. So the interesting thing about this Dallas matchup is that Week Five, Andrew Thomas was in the midst of struggling, but this game he's going up against Demarcus Lawrence again. Randy Gregory again. He's going up against Alden Smith again. Those three guys once again. So it's going to be interesting to see how Andrew Thomas can do when he was struggling at the beginning of the season, and now he's kind of got his feet wet. He kind of has a rhythm going. Joe Judge was working with him more. Uh, Coach Gouge was working with him more. He will not be available this weekend due to COVID, but it's just going to be fun to see him operate one more time, our first-round pick in 2020, and the fact that he's uh, grown through a lot this rookie season, his first season. Key to victory number four, Kyler Fackrell is back. And that's really, really big for this defense. Because Kyler Fackrell is big both rushing the passer, and I even think he's more important in terms of stopping the run. The Giants have been, been relying on a lot of three defensive linemen formations. And in today's NFL, having edge rushers that can get to the quarterback, that's a good thing. It's good to rely on those guys. And Kyler Fackrell has been exactly average in terms of his pressure rate and run stop rate and if you're looking at this graph that I'm putting up right now he has been exactly average and in Patrick Graham's scheme at Patrick Graham's system and also for what we expected Kyler Fackrell to be that's really really good he met the expectations of his one-year deal and in Patrick Graham's system uh, this year we're not really relying on any kind of edge rusher to be great you know, Patrick Graham has been able to scheme around that. So getting Kyler Fackrell back is huge. We're not relying on Carter Coughlin. We're not relying on Cam Brown. We're not relying on Jabal Sheard. Those guys are now going to be rotational pieces, while Kyler Fackrell, I wouldn't be surprised if he's playing 100% of the snaps this weekend. Having Kyler Fackrell back is big. He also kind of had a good game against Dallas the first time around. Had a pick six against uh, uh, Dak Prescott and Ezekiel Elliott. He kind of he kind of uh, stiff-armed him down to the ground. That was kind of fun. So key to victory number five. And this is the unfortunate thing. We are not in total control of our destiny. Fly, Eagles, fly. Key to victory number five. Jalen Hurts, Stan Channel, this is, for, for one weekend. Let Jalen Hurts cook. Let him run. Let him throw it, let him throw it deep. Um, to who, I don't know, because Philly is a scum-of-the-earth franchise, and they're sitting all of their best players they're sitting Miles Sanders. I think they're sitting Deshaun Jackson. They're sitting everybody. They're sitting Fletcher Cox. Jim Schwartz literally just decided to leave the team. I don't know if he's leaving the team before Week 17 or after Week 17, but scum of the earth franchise, Philadelphia. Why would you draft Jalen Hurts in the second round to not give him the best chance to go out and prove himself with a terrible supporting cast? They're keeping Doug Peterson. They they why draft why draft Jalen Hurts in the second round if you're not going to give him a fair shot and you're just going to keep Carson Wentz? Uh, I I hope the Eagles cut him, have sixty million dollars in dead cap, and they never win another football game for the next ten years. That's what I hope. Scum of the earth franchise because they're not helping the Giants. Sorry, not sorry. Yes, the Giants should have taken care of their own business. Eagles are scum of the earth. Okay, five keys to victory. Goodbye. Um, we'll we're we're gonna go to the playoffs. We're gonna go to the playoffs. Uh, big time Jalen Hurts account. Big time Jalen Hurts channel. He's gonna do it on Sunday Night Football. The Giants are gonna win. We're gonna we're gonna be in a playoff game. Believe it, and it will happen. Regardless, if this is the last time, thank you for watching all this season. Uh, the Five Keys videos on Saturday. Um, love you all. Stay tuned for an off season full of content. Be well.